All right, so we're going to begin module two. Uh, we actually started it um, last week and hopefully had a chance to at least browse around through module two and take a look. Uh, this is the module that will take us up through the end uh, of the semester. There are going to be a few assignments, so we'll have a, an assignment due, um, assignment five due on the 26th. It'll be assigned on, the, on uh, October 19th. We'll um, have another assignment six, assign week 11, and that won't be due until November 9th. So we're going to set the stage uh, beginning this week and the following next few weeks on talking about data literacy. Now, we're not going to get too heavy into data. There's, there's a lot around it. What I want to do is set a foundation for it so that we can approach data from a uh, a data in an information perspective when it comes to things like research and, and uh, especially the project that you're working on. So that's really kind of where we're going to go with it. Our final exam, well, the last exam, it's not a final exam, but the last exam will be an exam too. It'll be on this subject material um, assigned on November 16th and due on the 23rd. So that will be the last exam. There's only two exams in here. This is the second of the two. Um, and it won't be a comprehensive exam. It'll just be on this module. And then obviously your final is due by December 7th, 11.59 uh, p.m., which is, your, which is your final project. Now, uh, I did talk a little bit about um, using data visuals in your project. So there's three visuals that are required in your project. Um, and I've talked a little bit about them in terms of you reusing an existing data visual, something that supports the, the text that you're writing about. Um, or if you want, you can actually create your own. So we're going we're gonna to do a little bit in the way of creating our own visuals based on data. And then um, it's not a requirement that you do your own, but if you want to do it, we'll, um, we'll have some uh, assignment seven and assignment, uh, actually assignment six and seven will actually uh, allow you to do that. And assignment seven, which is going to be assigned on, the no on November 9th and due the 16th, is really a charting and visualization uh, assignment. So we're going to do a little bit in the way of charting and visualizing. Uh, information you'll be given an Excel spreadsheet with some data on it. You'll be shown what the chart needs to look like, and uh, instructions on how to do it, and then you'll create the chart. So it won't be too hard. Um, all of the we're only going to use Excel from a tool perspective, but we're going to talk about data from a big picture perspective, and um, there. Data in in and of itself has has a has a has a lot of deep meaning to it. So we can get data that actually um, works well with the 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 subject that we're trying to explore. It could also be data that doesn't really fit our model too well. So it may either be unstructured data, like a feed, Twitter feed, or a Facebook feed, or it could be data that is in a format that is useful but needs to be cleaned. And we're gonna go over some techniques in this week's lecture material and next week's lecture material on how to clean up data and make sure it fits our model. And then we're gonna do a, this actually this first assignment, I'll talk a little bit about it. This assignment five, let me just go into the module. So we began data this week. So October 12th was the beginning of our data. We're talking about data types in Excel. We're talking about um, some big picture concepts of uh, Moore's Law. All right, so if you've already gone through this stuff, you'll, you'll hopefully have gotten a good feel for what Moore's Law is and why that's important because technology in, in general kind of obeys the Moore's Law in terms of the capability doubling every 18 months and then the cost of it coming down um, um, in proportion, which these days, I think that 18 months is even a little less. It's probably a year or less in terms of the capability that our technology delivers to us. Um, the learning objective, and I basically went over the 
uh, entire learning objective in these two videos. So if you have not looked at these two videos, certainly go ahead and do it. It kind of explains a little bit what I'm, about what I'm talking about tonight. This is really a, um, it was previously recorded in, in the spring semester. So you'll see the dates that are gonna be different in Blackboard, disregard the dates, don't worry about it. The content is exactly the same. Same thing with lecture video too. Um, and it's gonna explain these data types in a little more detail. Um, you're gonna to wanna to be prepared for using Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel comes as part of the Microsoft Office suite that you get as a, as a registered student at the university. The instructions for downloading Microsoft Excel to your device are right here. So those instructions basically take you into your Office account. Now that should work for both Mac and Windows. Um, I don't believe I'm talking, I don't believe there's an example in there about a Linux version. So if you're using a Linux desktop, um, you're gonna need to load a, a Windows simulator in it and then run the Windows version of it. But for the most part, everybody's using Mac and Windows. Um, there'll be a demonstration file that I talk about in the video, and then it'll go through a series of edits on that demonstration file, and then the, the following edits. Basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna show you how to use some of the capabilities of Excel for data cleansing and adding data, moving data around. And then the final result of that, of those edits will be this edited file here. So I'm gonna start off with a, a data file. That data file is going to be actually the one you will use in your assignment next week. So it's a good example of how to uh, get in there and make some of the edits and, and do some of the manipulation of the data that you'll end up doing in your assignment next week. So I go through that in the videos to show you how to do that. And then here's the final result of that. So you get the raw pre-edited and then you get the final edited version. So you can get actually get a, um, uh, a feeling of how the solution actually works. Now I have these other links, these three links here that I kept in from the spring when we were first starting to talk about coronavirus and um, how data is being used to understand it and uh, attack it and uh, follow it and try to control it. Um, so I've, these three here, these three links here are kind of more of supplemental information. I don't believe the exam asks you any questions in any of these links. So it does get in into how uh, data science and data analytics and informatics in general um, and how important data is in order to track something as big and as fast moving and as unknown as coronavirus. So you know, take a look at those. It's, it's quite interesting, especially if you're interested in uh, possibly being an informatics major. So that's, that's pretty much what we're gonna, we were doing for this week. Um, the data types in Excel is an important one because it really kind of lays the foundation for the kinds of data that you might process in, in an Excel file or, or some of the data that you may process um, if you were doing any kind of research. All right, so the assignment for this week is to make sure that you can, um, you've gotten the data in design book and then look at chapters, read chapters one and two on that. And again, those are big picture conceptual um, uh, approaches to data and how we use data to create visualizations and presentations. In other words, sort of taking the raw data and starting to form a picture of it. Um, and then also make sure that you've got Excel downloaded. So the instructions uh, in the link below show you how to actually get a copy of Excel downloaded to your device, whether it's a Mac or a Windows machine. Um, now, again, this is in the spring when everybody was still on, on campus. Um, the idea is you either download it to your device or you use one of the university computers to do the assignment. So um, I'm hoping you shouldn't have any issues with, with either one of those op opportunities. So, and then the third assignment for this week is to just download that Excel sample file that I covered in class and then just get familiar with it. So essentially it's practicing this, it's practicing what you're seeing in the recorded video above and then making sure that you're comfortable with this Excel file and then what, how you get the result edited. So the solution and all the steps that went in it. Again, watching these two videos will help you get there. So that's kind of a, an introduction to 
uh, data. And then in week nine, we'll go into a little bit more depth on data and you'll get your assignment, which will be due on the 26th. Um, we're gonna get into this concept. We're gonna talk a little bit about how data is actually stored on a computer. So we sit at a keyboard and we, um, we tap away on the keys and type things in and we click on things with a mouse and how's that actually stored? Well, there's a, there's a conversion process that goes on from the characters that we understand and see, like the ABCDs, the numeric system, um, the slashes, question marks, greater than signs, all of those things that, were, that are available to us on our keyboard and they get interpreted via this ASCII table. So the, the key gets interpreted by the operating system, whether it's Windows or uh, Mac OS, and then it looks up the code, ends up coming in as a binary code, but we're not gonna get into that. And then it looks up that code in a table and says, oh, okay, you press this key that generated this binary sequence of bits. It, it matches this value in the table. Now I'm, I know what you actually entered, and I'm gonna save that in the in the computer's memory or on the hard drive. And then we're gonna get into this concept of pivot tables. So if you've ever used Excel before, you may have done pivot tables. Probably one of the most important capabilities of Excel. So any Excel user um, has probably run across pivot tables. They're a great way to take rows and rows and rows and columns of data and to summarize it in a form that is easy for you to uh, interpret. All right, so I may have a row, I may have a thousand rows of, um, of data and let's say 10 or 15 columns of data. And if you look at that, it's just a bunch of data. But if you use a pivot table, you can summarize that data, either sum it, average it, um, do statistics on it, mean, median, um, mode on data, and then summarize it. So for instance, one of your assignments is going to be counting up the number of um, meals that are chosen for a conference over a three-day period, okay? And very hard to see if you're looking at hundreds of rows of data and a bunch of columns. It's much easier to see if you summarize the meal choices that were chosen by the attendees over a three-day period. Well, now we've just summarized it using a pivot table. Um, you'll have another assignment on a pivot table where you'll take uh, average um, scores on exams across a number of courses by class. So freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and the average score across those classes. Well, it's very hard to do when you're looking at hundreds of rows of data. It's very easy to see it in a pivot table makes it summarize. So those are the, those are the important concepts that we'll, we'll, um, we'll touch on in week nine. Um, and then there'll be a, dis a little bit of a discussion on this um, how data is used in um, decision-making processes. And then there, there's a, I believe this is a website um, on how data is driving fantasy sports decisions. So kind of an interesting, interesting thing there. And then the upload for, the upload link for your assignment five is right here. So clicking on that upload, the in instructions for your assignment are right here. So you click on those instructions, it'll tell you what to do. And then when you're finished with it, it'll be a, it'll, this first assignment um, in the data section in no, assignment number five is actually going to be two things. It's going to be a Word document and a Google form. And the point of the Google form is to, the, the lecture talks about when data comes in and it's not in a format that we need or it's um, all jumbled together. For instance, you've got a data field that is expecting to have numeric values only and it has numeric and alpha characters in it. So you can't add a number, you know, one, two, A, B, C uh, to another number. Well, it's got, it's got alpha characters in there. So unless you're dealing with hexadecimal, but we're not, and that's a different, different discussion. But um, the idea here is that if you're doing a, a good data design and you're trying to elicit data from a user or you're trying to get data brought in, if you can force a format or at least get the user to conform to a certain format, you have a better chance of getting clean data and not having to clean it up. And that's really what this Google form is all about, is creating a form, asking the user to enter some data in it, but guiding the user what to enter by creating a, a, um, a format around the input. All right, so that drives the point home that um, by doing that, there's techniques that you can do to kind of reduce 
what is called dirty data, data that doesn't conform to a particular format. And then you'll do the uh, Excel workbook as well. So that'll be your assignment five upload. And then in week 10, we'll talk about uh, another really important um, function within Excel called the VLOOKUP function, right? So the VLOOKUP is another really important um, capability, a, a data cleanup capability, and um, there'll be an assignment on that as well. So you'll you'll get use you, you'll learn how to use the VLOOKUP, you'll practice the VLOOKUP. There'll be all sorts of examples here, and then the following week you'll have a, a um, an assignment on it. All right, so more on data cleaning and. Then in week 11, we'll revisit the and, or, and not logic. This time, we're going to revisit it using Excel. So not only is it important when we're doing search, but it's also important when we're doing um, functions inside of Excel. All right, so we're going to learn how to do some if statement logic, conditional if statement logic. And again, there'll be a video here going over how to do this stuff in Excel. Okay, so there's a video recorded here, and I believe that is also the spring. So if you see um, the dates in there uh, of the spring, disregard that. It's it's a uh, a re a rebroadcast, if you will, of of the spring's video. And then there'll be a another uh, series of videos on these uh, functions called trim proper and text to columns. All right, and inside the video, I'll also um, show you how to how to use those. They're they're useful in being able to again clean up data that is um, that has come in 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 a format other than what you need it for. You don't want to you don't want to throw away data if you can help it. So you want to try to clean it up and use it. So that's kind of what these functions are used for. And so there's a conditional if and or not, and then. The, some examples and how to import data into Excel using a format that is other than Excel. One of them is comma delimited. Um, comma delimited is just simply data that is in a text file separated by commas. So one column is separated by another column, separated by another column, separated by another column, and all separated by commas. All right, and that tells Excel, hey, Whenever you encounter a comma in the data, that's a new column of data. So that tells you that's, an, that's a way to organize your data in a way that uh, we can bring it into Excel in columns and rows. So there's a lot in this uh, week 11. So there's a lot of information in here and a lot of kind of hands-on work in terms of what you can do in Excel. So this one, this one's kind of long. Assignment six here is only got one part of it, and it really is, it's, it's essentially one assignment, but you're gonna use the VLOOKUP and pivot tables with some conditional logic in there as well. So that one's a very good one. Um, again, like I said, we're gonna get into some of the major functions of Excel, not too crazy. Um, and just useful things for uh, being able to utilize data. And again, the idea is that you can hopefully see that you can grab data from any source in any kind of format and then use tools like Excel to get it into a usable format where you can then make it part of your, your presentation or project. Again, it's not a requirement that you do it, but it's showing you how it's done and how, um, what the capabilities are. And there's just so much free data as we saw in some of the lecture material over the last few weeks, so many just so many sources of data um, that uh, it's essentially the raw data that you can, um, when you get comfortable with Excel and you you need to do it or you want to do it, um, you've got these tools available to you. And then in week 12, we're going to get into again more recorded lecture. So for this one, this is a real important one because. In this week 12, we're going to jump right into doing charting and graphing in Excel. And if you haven't done it before, um, this, these, these uh, two lectures here, there's a part one and a part two to this, those two videos will actually walk you through how to do a charting example. There's other 
links in here for showing you how to do charting here. But these two lectures right here actually show you how to do it such that this assignment right here, assignment seven, will be very easy to do. All right, so it'll be pretty easy for you to do assignment, uh, your assignment, which is charting and graphing after you've watched these two videos. So again, it'll be a step-by-step -step how to do those. Um, Visualization is a very big topic. Um, if you've ever done anything on, um, on visualization or um, if you're ever into uh, gra graphics, presentation, marketing, uh, any way to take uh, a large amount of data and then show it in a, in a picture or a visualization, it just makes it so much easier for your, your consumer or your end user or whomever it is that you're, you're conveying information to to understand it. So, uh, you know, you hear the, the cliche, picture's worth a thousand words. Well, there's a reason for that. Uh, you can take a very, very large data set, put a visualization to that data set using a tool like Excel, um, again, if you're going to be an informatics major or even a minor, you'll use tools like Excel, you use tools like R, and you'll use tools like Python to generate some very complex visualizations based on large data sets. So we're just sort of just getting a little introduction here to how you approach those kinds of things in this class. And then assignment seven is a pretty straightforward one. Like I said, if you watch the fir first two videos in their lecture one and lecture two video, this assignment will be pretty easy for you. It's essentially, what we're doing here is we're, you're given a final uh, workbook and set, or a final Word document, and, it's, and it gives you, I think it's four, four or five charts. It says, produce these four or five charts using Excel. And all you have in your um, assignment file so it's the, your, your data file is the raw data. And then you'll use Excel to produce the visualizations that are asked for in this charting instruction right here. So you're given the, the, the chart and the visual, make it look like this. So your data coming out of your Excel will need to do that. And you will upload the Excel, not the completed assignment. In other words, you can't just co copy and paste my pictures and say, hey, I did it. You got to upload your Excel. So, but again, it's fairly easy, pretty straightforward. And if you watch those two videos, it's, it's going to be pretty easy to do. So that is going to take us to through week 12. And then in week 13, there's really going to be no new material. So hopefully by this period you'll have finished your visualization assignment and then you'll be given the exam two it will be available after november 16th so on november 16th at 12 a.m so november 16th early morning it's available and then it will be due the 23rd at 11:59 p.m so you'll have essentially a week and a day to, to do it. And again, this exam will be only on the module two material on data visualization. Um, there'll be some questions on Excel in there. Format will be very, very similar. 20 questions, 60 minutes to complete it. And you'll have two attempts as well just like on the first one in your highest score counts. All right, so that's plenty of time to, to take that exam. 60, 60 minutes for 20 questions um, and two attempts at it. So that's how we're going to wrap up the semester. And then in week 14, I'll probably have another Zoom. So I don't know if I'll have another one but before the 23rd of November. It may not be. Um, we'll see how things go. My next Zoom, again, I'll, I'll let you know um, via an announcement, but I, I think the, the next Zoom that we have will be this date right here, November 23rd, essentially be the last day of class. It'll be a, a Q&A session, sort of a course wrap up. Um, I'll record it as well and I'll give you a chance to ask any questions and just reiterate that the final is due by December 7th. Again, 
the idea on your final, I keep telling you all along, is that you work on it. So at the very, very beginning of the semester, we picked our topic, we outlined it, we sort of organized our thoughts, we looked for some research, and then you've had from the citations, which is assignment four, or assignment three, all the way literally through uh, November to kind of just work on it a little by little. So taking your outline and then fleshing it out, adding more details to it. And again, it's a step-by-step -step iterative process. And hopefully, you know, right around this period of time, the end of um, November or close to it, you'll have pretty much put the finishing touches on it, maybe, you know, set it aside for one final edit and then you'll have um, completed it by December 7th and uploaded at Blackboard. So this is the link here to upload your final project. So again, over time, should be pretty straightforward and pretty easy to, to get this done. And that will essentially wrap us up. The module two has an overview of, of all the key dates in there. All right, so that is, that's essentially what I wanted to cover tonight. I'll give you a chance to ask any questions. If anybody has questions and they want to ask them, certainly you can ask them now. My question, hi, this is Professor hi. Amber hi. Stevens. Hi. Um, hi. My question is um, the paper that you, the sample papers that you sent, one of them got a 98 Y. Um, I don't know. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Module one, right? Mm -hmm. Sample projects. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's take a look. Because I downloaded that one and I'm reviewing it as to basically just base it off of to make a framework for mine. All right. Yep. But why is it a 98 and not a hundred? Like I want to know what's missing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's take a look. Um, let me share my screen out here. I could have been just quite honestly, I don't get, <clears throat> I get in most every semester I have about 200 in the class. So mm -hmm. it's quite possible that I didn't grade this one. Okay. Um, Hmm. You know, it, I think the only way, because I asked the, so if you, if you've taken a look at your grades inside of grade center, you should have seen feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and it. yeah. And I'd have to literally go into the students. I'd have to open this one back up, but let me, I'll just take a quick look at it. Oh, okay. That I'd have to go in and yeah. And see what the feedback was. I don't know if I graded this one or not. Um, okay. So there's a good visual a third um, one visual and it was yeah cited well another visual i mean literally this this paper probably could have gotten 100 because it's um it's like perfect in terms of its citation and it's perfect in terms of its visuals that's what i thought a third or less yeah yeah actually you know what i think the ta might have taken off a point because there's four visuals in here and not three okay because of that 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 can be the only thing that i can think of at this point <clears throat> okay like like straying from the format you got it so okay it, it's asked for three visuals and i think there was a fourth visual i think it may have been a little nitpicky thing like that but other than that no this one was really really good so okay that's why, that's why it's listed out there but yeah that's a very good question that's my guess at this point i'd have to go back and read the the um the comments the that were, yeah, yeah but that's okay. that's probably my guess because that could have easily gotten 100 Okay, awesome. Thank you. Sure. I have a question. Yes. It's in regards to the homework, the first mm -hmm. homework for module two. Okay. Um, you, you stated that the input for the first name should be open brackets, zero through nine, close brackets, right? I tried that and it's not working. Oh, uh, let's see. So this is, is it module one or module two? Module two. Okay, let's take a look. And so you're already on the, the homework assignment? Yeah. All right. So this is the, 
Um, yeah. What step are you in on that process? First name when I have to. Uh, okay. Hold on. Oh, hold on one second here. Let me pull up the solution because I post the solution out for the TAs. Can you see my screen or is it still Blackboard? I can see it. Oh, you can see the Excel? Uh, it's still Blackboard. Okay. Let's, uh, let me switch it over to the Excel. Yeah, that's one thing I like about Zoom. It'll make it very easy to switch over. Um, all right. Okay, so let's take a look at the, I believe it's the form responses, right? So exactly what step is it? Do you know? Um, the questionnaire from Google Docs. Oh, it's the Google Docs. It's not the Excel. Oh, not the Excel, the Google Docs. Oh, okay. All right. Let me close this out. And I'll get into the I'll get into the actual Google Docs. Uh, I'll get into the assignment. Let's take a look. Okay, so you can see my Word doc now? Yeah. Okay. All right, so again, the idea here is to create this form and, and it, it talks about why you do the form and it also talks about why you do these kinds of things so that when you're asking for data from uh, an end user and you put your, your form or your application or your software, or whatever your tool is, out in front of a large number of users, you never know what kind of data you're gonna get in there. So what you try to do is, is sort of um, limit or guide the user into what the choices will be. So that way your data is consistent. And that's really what the point of this form right here. So the, obviously this, let's take for instance, first name, last name, all right? You really can't control that. So you have no, that's the universe of first names and last names is so huge, just no, not, no possible way of doing that. So that you're gonna have to let a user enter. Something like a role where you need to know exactly what the role is and you need to know the role should be one of these three. You create a list for that. So the only way to, to, to put a value in the role is to choose it from a list, all right? So that way you don't have a free form short answer field here and have a, a variety of different roles. You, that's just bad, um, bad design and it'll end up creating a lot of dirty data. Um, so here, same thing with meal choice. So you're gonna create a meal choice um, of these three. That's the only three, three you've got. So if you never gave them a list, they could say, oh, I want filet mignon or I want a petite, um, filet with um, or lobster tail and you know so you, you want to choose what it is you you want them to actually enter and these are the three choices for dates I think day one two and three I think that's a multi or it's a checkbox so that means that if it's a checkbox you could check one or all of them all right um, and then this is a multiple choice field, so you can choose one of those. Here you can choose one or more of them, and then any kind of notes, okay? So that's the point of doing that. Um, let's see, so what step is it, do you remember? Right, you gotta scroll down. Okay. Yeah. Is it still? Is it, is yeah, it oh, yeah, my fault. Is it creating the form itself? No, um, creating like an error message, but that's for like the first name. Yeah, uh, okay. What do you remember what step it is? Right there, right here. Mm -hmm. All right, so edit the question for the first name field, make it a required question. This forces the user to enter something there. Also, check for data validation. So, you know, it's quite possible that the, the Google form itself may have a different way of doing a validation. So it may not look exactly like this. I'd have to go back out to Google and see if they've changed this part. Yeah, they changed it. Okay. Yeah. 
So the, yeah. the point being there, is it still called data validation or is it called something else? It's called response validation. Okay, response validation. Okay, good. So basically what they're asking here is make sure that um, the text does not have a number. In other words, the name shouldn't have a number in it. So uh, the idea here is select text so that it does not match zero through nine. So your, your response validation has to make sure that it's accepting only A through Z. That's essentially how you do it. So you could flip it around and say, don't accept zero through nine, or you could say, hey, I'm only gonna accept A through Z. So the response validation should have a way of, of, of determining that and defining that. I tried zero through nine, but for some reason, like once I used the live link, it didn't work. Like I was still able to put like a number in and then um, come up with the error message. Okay. Um, Cause I, I inputted the same quotated marks that you put. Yep. Open brackets, zero through nine, close brackets and it still didn't work. So it, it allowed that to be entered? Yeah. It did allow it, okay. Um, let me just see. I don't know if it's a different format. I should oh, use or let's take a quick look. So Google form. I'm gonna Google. Google form form validation rules. All right. So set rules for your form. So if you if you Google. All right, so if you Google the terms form validation rules, it's gonna bring you up to a document. Let's say I'll just change my screen here so you can see it. And I want you to go through the exercise. I, I don't wanna do it for you, but um, this way you, you get a feel for how to actually create something. So what it'll do is it'll take you to this. So uh, ellipsis, okay, so uh, ellipsis for more, uh, response validation, uh, regular expressions. There we go. So there, that is, all right. So th this part right here will show you actually how to create a, what's called a regular expression. So what happened is Google sort of really made that thing sophisticated and it created this thing called, a, it's called shorthand, shorthand it's called regex. So you may have ever hear in the future, if you're doing anything in informatics, you may hear the term regex. Yeah. And basically what it's doing is it's taking a, a set of characters and it's matching, matching it against a predefined template. And that's what Google did to this. They actually created a little more sophistication in that form. So you will wanna choose, all right here. You'll want to do, yeah, right here. That that would be the one that you'd want to uh, choose. So what it'll do is it'll give you lowercase a through z, uppercase a through z, um, and you can leave off this amp or asterisk. So that right there would be a good validation for you. So if you use that as your validation, that'll get you, so you're saying basically the only thing that can be put in here is a through z's, uppercase, lowercase. So it shouldn't allow anything else to be put in there or it'll allow it and then you hit enter and it'll give you an error message. All right, so th this is a good, good um, set of rules for, for creating your form. So does that make sense? Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, sure. Yeah, that's a good one because I, I, I know that sometimes if you've never created a form before on Google, you'll f first of all realize how, e how easy it is and how sophisticated the Google's made that, that you really could create some really cool stuff. And what ends up happening is you, 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 when you save your data in the form, it actually saves it to a, a sheet, uh, a Google Sheets, which is essentially Excel for Google's Excel in the background. And the assignment, this assignment, I'm going to switch back over to it. Um, when you download that data, 
that actually was created. So when you click on this data right here, that actually was created from that form. So what ends up happening is if you created a form and you enter, enter data in it and you gave it to a whole bunch of people and you wanted to use it and gather some information, it would create a sheets in the background and then you could open that sheet and then download the data and do some stuff in, in Excel with it. So um, we're, not, we're not getting into you getting that data and bringing it down. You're going to download some predefined set of data right here. But that's just an aside as, or, or a part two, if you will, of, of, of that form. And again, the form is, is giving you um, some experience and in, in, in showing you how to create some validation so that you know how to clean, um, you know, make data clean. And that's really what the point of that was. And then you'll download this data file. And again, the lecture for this week goes over this. I think it's this week or is it next week? Might be next week's lecture. Video lecture goes over how you actually manipulate this data. All right. So... It's a good exercise. It's um, not too hard, but it really drives the point home. And a few key concepts really go a long way in, in, in terms of, um, of creating good quality data. And again, like I said, if you get into anything in data science or if you go on and do anything in analytics or whatever, getting clean data is so important because you don't want to throw away data. That's a, you know, it's so hard, first of all, to get data and and you want to try to get it as clean as possible so you can use it. The more data you've got, you'll find, you know, if you take any anal analytics class, the more samples you have. And if you're taking a stats class as well, the more, the more samples you have, the better chance you have of, of your data, of your sample data, estimating your normal population. So, um, again, that's just a kind of a data science thing where the more data, the better, the more samples, the better, because again, it, pop it, it, it approaches, the population and then after all anything that we do in this field of informatics or data science or analytics is trying to understand the population and it's physically impossible to gather every single piece of data in a population so we try to sample it so that we can get an approximation on it and the better we get at that sampling the better chance we have of being accurate when we start to predict what we're seeing on our data so big picture data science analytics informatics kinds of stuff so all right, any other questions? Fun section that we're gonna be in. I think the first part, you know, we have to get through it and we've gotta, you know, understand the process and, and um, embrace the process. Can get a little boring at times, I, I know, understand that, um, but it's, uh, it's all about learning the process and when you're disciplined and follow the process, you're gonna end up, you know, doing a good job in terms of, gathering data and solving problem. And, um, and in this case, it's a research, research paper. And here we're gonna learn some basic techniques, which again, basic but powerful techniques and being able to gather data. Um, anything that you've researched, there was a whole bunch of effort behind the scenes to produce the research that was produced. Um, so here you're getting a little bit of a, an experience in how that, how that actually happens, so. Any other questions? All right. So we will wrap for tonight and um, be on the lookout for an announcement in your email. Again, I'm probably pretty sure that our next one will be on the 23rd of November, but I may have one before that, um, especially if um, I get lots of questions on, on the data sections and there are issues with any of the assignment work I may have within, in the interim, but um, until then, we will we'll catch up for sure um, at least one more time before the end of the semester. Have a good one, everybody, and we'll talk soon. Thank you.